Kevin Jackson Radio Show. Welcome, everybody. Kevin Jackson here to Kevin Jackson Show. They say the secret to good leadership is to praise loudly but to blame softly. And they use that against President Trump, whom they say blames loudly. Jeff Sessions, do your job. Welcome, everybody. Kevin Jackson here. KJRadio.com is what you're where you can find out more about the show. I happen to be Kevin Jackson back from the Dorchester Conference. My folks that are listening to me on KYKN, it was good seeing some of you good people while I was in Oregon. Wish I'd had more time. And uh, I know that the second day, I, I did bring some good weather to you. So you're welcome. <laughs> anyway, I was glad to get a chance to meet a lot of you folks that I hadn't met. I hope you enjoyed my uh, speech. Uh, most of you did. I know you came out and told me it was phenomenal and I really appreciate hearing that and hope that uh, I imparted quite a bit of knowledge on you about how to impact the politics in your region of the world, because you are one vote in your house and your Senate, your state house and state Senate to losing that state. You're you're almost there. I'm just telling you it, now. Here's the deal. You got some good people up there and I hope they they get elected and that changes. And if there's anything I can do to help. Please reach out to the station, KYKN, let them know, and they'll get in contact with me or contact me at KY, KY, KJRadio.com. So um, blame is what I want to talk about. Bertrand Russell, who's a playwright, said democracy is a process by which people choose who will get the blame. See, that's the way politics has worked. It didn't matter if you were competent. If somebody said, it's your turn, you took the fall. You could be the person who's keeping the wheels on the wagon in politics. If somebody points to you, if the king, if Barack Obama, back when he was president, said, you're going to take the fall, you took the fall. A good example, Susan Rice should have been fired. Hillary Clinton over Benghazi. They all should have been dismissed. Many people in the Obama administration should have been dismissed. But Obama said, nope, nobody's going to get the blame. Not because he's a good leader but because he was a feckless leader and he needed incompetent people around him. The president Trump would have fired every one of them and it would have been very public and he would have blamed them because unlike I know the definition, you know, you, you should praise loudly and blame softly, but when somebody's wrong and I'm talking about lives are at stake, I'm talking about people's money, their livelihood. Are you going to eat or are you going to have to pay your medical bill when that type of thing is at stake? You need to blame loudly. There's a time to blame loudly. But what democracy, what politics has done is it is dehumanized this whole thing. And it says, you know what? We're going to do it opposite. Hubert Humphrey said to err is human to blame someone else is politics. Barack Obama aired all the time. His non-public blaming of people was effectively him taking the blame away from himself. There was only one person to blame for everything that we're talking about right now in politics. This economy that Barack Obama paid $10 trillion to build, that economy, you could have bought Japan, Great Britain, and what other country? There's one other country. Three countries that don't add up to the GDP of the $10 trillion spent by Barack Obama. They barely surpass it. It's Japan, Great Britain, and Germany. That's it. Could have almost bought all three of those with the $10 trillion. Can you imagine us running those countries as well? (laughs) Adding that to America's GDP? So there's nobody to blame. People were dying on Obamacare. People afraid to go to the hospital. There's nobody to blame but Barack Obama. Oh, Kevin, there's people pulling his strings and minions. I don't care. You blame Barack Obama. Whoever were pulling his strings, fine. He became the most powerful man in the world. And at that point, he could have, you know, he could have gone after Soros or all the string pullers. He either likes having his strings pulled or he's to blame. You can't have them both, leftists. Yeah, Catherine Hepburn said this of blame. She says, we taught, we're taught we taught that you blame your father, you blame your sisters, your brothers, the school, the teachers, but never blame yourself. It's never your fault. 
but it's always your fault because if you want it to change, you're the one who has got to change. That's a lady talking about, I mean, she's obviously gone, but she's talking about the blame game (laughs) decades ago. Are we really talking about something new here, folks, when we talk about blame? Any of these problems, hypocrisy, give me your issue. Tell me, are we doing anything new? The only thing we do is we look at it and we say, wow, she was talking about that 50, 60 years ago. And you know what the blame game is? It's worse today than it ever before. Kids don't take responsibility for anything. They don't take responsibility for their grades. They don't take responsibility for their behavior. They don't take responsibility for anything. And you know what the left will tell you? It's the guns, man. It's, it's, it's always something else. Today we'll talk about multiple people who want to tell you that a kid goes in and shoots up a school. Well, it's the guns problem. Really? I guess it wasn't the school's problem. I guess it wasn't the teacher's problem, the principal's problem, the FBI's problem, his parents' problem, society's problem. There are many things that lead to somebody finally picking up any weapon and deciding they want to use it, but they go, it's the gun. If he'd used a knife, would they be saying it's a knife problem? Yeah, good query, good, good query, isn't it? Because the left is never going to blame itself and look at what really is creating these people. What creates the angst of a kid in school? The left will tell you, oh, well, we need to teach them more tolerance against religions and we need to teach them not to bully each other and we need to teach the white boys that they have white privilege. Have you noticed who's shooting up these schools? Is it white girls? Girls got multiple problems in school. They got, you know, the makeup and the shoes they wear and all kinds of stuff. Girls aren't shooting up these schools. You want to know why? Because even though there may be white privilege, uh, little Sally, she's not going to shoot up the school because nobody's telling her that she's got toxic masculinity. Oh, they'll tell her about her white privilege, but then they'll remind her, well, you're a woman. You've got gender privilege. So, no, you're okay. And so they they do everything to coddle her. But little white boys, I talked to some white uh, youngsters, some men at this event. I told them, guys, you got a heck of a world ahead of you. Toxic masculinity, white privilege, rape culture. Gee, where are you going to (laughs) hide? Anyway, we got a lot to talk about. The blame game. Schumer is in the news. Oh, speaking of blame, it's uh, stop blaming white people, Mark. This is the Kevin Jackson Radio Show. Do you owe back taxes to the IRS or state? The secret to avoiding the IRS nightmare is to seek professional representation. My friends at Security Tax Associates provide the most cost-effective and ethical representation in the industry while helping to avoid seizures, levies, and wage garnishments. Security Tax Associates is here to ensure that the appropriate steps are taken to permanently eliminate any possibility of future tax burdens once and for all. For a free, no-obligation consultation, contact Security Tax Associates, 844-779-4177. That's 844-779-4177. 844-779-4177 or visit them at securitytaxassociates.com Beth Cook Moranville author of Closer Than Your Breath A Book of Hope Hope, that wonderful, wonderful four letter word that you may feel completely out of I wrote this book to give you great hope. It's not too late. If fetal position is an all too familiar place for you, I understand. If the next 60 seconds are too long, this book is for you. Wherever you are right now, whether you're dealing with divorce or death or sickness, take hope. You are going to make it through this pain. Don't roll your eyes. I've walked this road and I know it. The best is yet to come. Closer Than Your Breath, a book of hope from author and speaker Beth Cook Moranville can be found on Amazon.com or Kindle.com. For more information, visit CloserThanYourBreath.com or on Facebook at Closer Than Your Breath. Kevin J. 
Jackson Radio Show. Welcome back, everybody. Kevin Jackson here. It is Stop Blaming White People Month. Are you aware of this? And it comes on the heels of Black History Month. And, of course, it gets three days more time, more days, rather, than the uh, Black History Month, except on Leap Year, where it only gets two days more. So stop blaming white people. I wish I had remembered that when I was giving my speech at the Dorchester Conference. I could have kicked off Stop Blaming White People Month. I jokingly, you know, t- uh, greeted all the, the black folks that were at Dorchester. Of course, there was one, Frank. It was good to meet you there. (laughs) And I laugh about this because, you know, it's funny. I get asked this question all the time among white people. They're like, Kevin, you know, um, we need more uh, black people in Oregon or we need more black people in Montana or we need more black people here. Why don't we? And I'm like, why? Ask a very simple question. Why? And, And they're like, well, look around. And I go, "Okay, I've looked around. And they go, well, what do you think? I go, I see a lot of very nice people. I I don't uh, at, at this event there were quite a few Koreans. I didn't know this. You guys will be shocked by this. In Happy Valley, Oregon, there's a town called Happy Valley. It's over 25% Korean. Now it doesn't have a lot of black folks, but it got a lot of Koreans. And the mayor, by the way, of Happy Valley is a Mexican lady. But they they're looking for black people. I'm like, "Why are you looking for black folks? You got a Mexican mayor, you got 25% of your town that's Korean." Who cares? You know, so what what exactly, you know, it's, it's crazy to me. To be, we need more black people in Wisconsin. I, and I, I immediately go, look, black people, we don't like cold. I don't care. In case you notice where our skin is black because we're deal. We know how to deal with the sun. <laughs> Seattle is not exactly the sunniest place in the world. Portland isn't exactly the sunniest place in the world. So. You know, what? why do you care? First of all, wh- why do you care? And somebody, well, Kevin, you know, there's got, you know, pe- black people don't know how to do this. I said, let me exp- explain something to you. If I lived in the whitest country in the world, Scandinavia, it, it, whatever prejudices that people might have against people it, initially with me would be overcome very quickly as the word got out that he's a pretty nice guy. He's friendly. He's helpful. He wants nothing from anybody else. And he works hard. The word would get out and people would go, Kevin, uh, listen, uh, are there any more of you that you'd like to bring over? And soon I'd have the key to the city. I believe that wholeheartedly. Now, some people, well, you're naive. No, I'm not. I know human nature. There are going to be people that hate me and they're going to continue to hate, 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 hate. But they're going to be people that recognize what's good about me. And go, man, look, I don't care what in the world y'all are talking about. That dude, he is a good person. And eventually, it'll turn on the people that are against me. As long as I keep my, you know, eye on the prize, which is living my life on the, on the straight and narrow and keep focused, the, the naysayers drop off. And eventually, when more people like you than dislike you, now the rest of those folks, the ones that dislike you, got to either get on board or things go bad for them. So I'm not worried about that. There was a sign declaring March Stop Blaming White People Month, and it caused a fury in New Jersey. And it prompted an investigation. They had to find out who wants to stop blaming white people. How dare they? Don't they understand the narrative? We must blame somebody, and white people are just, they're the best. (laughs) You can't, when it comes to people, You can't blame anybody better than white folks. Thomas Sowell said something about it's funny how Western civilization is to blame for every bad thing that's happened in the world. Really? Have you thought about the things that we've invented? The cures for this and that and whatever? Look, I don't know what color it was of the person who found the, you know, mapped the human genome and and is you know, doing great things in cancer and Alzheimer's and all that stuff. But I'll tell you this, it's a lot of Westerners. (laughs) We have done more for the world, probably than anybody else in the world. Why are they blaming Western civilization? Why are they blaming white folks? So in New Jersey, they got this sign up, stop blaming white people month, causes a fury 
they want to know who put it up. I hope it was somebody black. <laughs> Just to be, I hope they find out it was Junius. <laughs> Junius Jones. <laughs> and Junius said, well, I put that up because a white boy helped me out. I was raking leaves. So I just figured, you know what? Well, I've been blaming that white boy for, for 40 years. And so he came over to help me rake some leaves. So I said, let's just stop blaming white people this month. Let's, let's make this month. Stop blaming white people month. <laughs> Can you imagine that CNN interview? <laughs> they say, in its entirety, the bright yellow and orange sign reads, March is National Stop Blaming White People Month. Accept responsibility for your own bad choices. Hug a white person. <laughs> what is so bad about that? They had hug a thug. <laughs> <Have> you... <laughs> they had hug a thug. If you can have a hug a thug, <laughs> you should certainly be able to have a hug a white person. <laughs> I mean, come on. <laughs> oh, man, that tickles me. Can you can you believe it? somebody is mad? <laughs> I mean, okay, leftists, let me help you out here because you're probably going. Kevin, just quit laughing. You make you're making too much fun. Here's the thing: Why can't you enjoy the idea that somebody wants to show some love to white people? What's so bad about that? It's like, no, we can't let white people know that we're going to let them off the hook. No, 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 Kevin, you don't get it. You don't get it. If white people know that they really haven't done a whole lot wrong. And in fact, <laughs> they've done some, a lot of things right. Well, that would upset the apple cart. <laughs> we can't go letting white people think that they're good. <laughs> Somebody must be blamed. There has to be a bad guy. If there is a protagonist, there must be an antagonist. Okay. He said the sign was discovered at a U.S. Postal <laughs> Service location in Flemington, 26 miles of Trenton, New Jersey's state capital, which happens to be where I was born. They said the town's population of 4,500 is about 78% white, according to U.S. census figures. So Greg Klemischk, a U.S. postal inspector, said the sign was discovered Thursday by postal employees and was immediately removed. We took it down immediately. We saw it and we were incensed. Who would dare put that sign up? He said the sign drew the ire of Flemington Councilwoman Betsy Driver, who criticized it on the public Flemington Forum Forward rather Facebook group. Flemington Forward. Get it? Racism in our town exists, and the racists have been emboldened in the past year to fly their hateful flags a bit higher and yell a bit louder, Driver wrote. The fact that someone even put that sign up is just a sad reflection of our town, Driver said. Stop blaming white people, man. The fact that somebody put that up is enough to make people go, this is a race. We got to stop the racism in our town. How dare they want to stop blaming white people, said 78% of white people in the town. Really? So a town, of, I tell you what, why don't you just turn your town over to black, said that. Then you could easily do it. For everybody that feels that way, why don't you just turn that stuff over, turn whatever you have over to black folks. This is the Kevin Jackson Radio Show. This is the Kevin Jackson Radio Show. What's up, Americanskis? Eleven people have left the Trump administration, and I heard that's the most of any administration in, like, modern times. And the sky is falling the way the media would present it. Donald Trump can't keep anybody in his house. He's, people are leaving him left and right. Glad you guys are here. Welcome to the Kevin Jackson Show. KJRadio.com. Donald Trump struggling to keep his staff. I don't know if you guys remember, but I told you, don't sweat this stuff. Leave it, leave it alone. Donald Trump is bringing actual business practices to government. See, here's what happens in government. You get a job, you're there for life. It doesn't matter if you're completely incompetent, Hillary Clinton. It don't matter if you're completely incompetent, Susan Rice. It doesn't matter if you're completely incompetent, Barack Obama. They will leave you there. How long do congressmen and senators stay in office? Anybody? Anybody? Till they die. 
You know what Donald Trump has done to the Republican Party? He's got people retiring. Now, the left will tell you, that's bad. Look at the Republicans that are leaving office, the congressmen who are quitting. They want you to, I mean, they get de- doggone Shakespearean on you. They're leaving right now. Look at them go. <laughs> you know, they're like I'm in some British theater. The fact is, that's what should be happening. They should be term limiting themselves. You know why these fools are term limiting? Because they know the jig is up. Donald Trump is going to hold their feet to the fire. He's going to make them live up to what they have promised their constituents. That's why they're leaving. Now, we not, not us, but the left, they're used to people standing around. Look at him. They're going, man. Donald Trump's making people go. They don't like him. They, no, they don't like him. They sure don't. They don't like effective leadership. We know what's funny about that. Congress's ratings are always less than 20 percent. And when they're leaving, the press will tell you, oh, my gosh, look at that. That's bad news for Donald Trump. No, if you're if your your popularity is under 20 percent, 80 percent of the people want you gone. And then, then the press tells you they're leaving. And then they're like, oh, look at them leave. That's that's not good. You kind of get an idea of what's going on, don't you? You See what I'm saying? So Donald Trump, Hope Hicks is leaving his administration. Look, I don't know what Hope Hicks does. I'm presuming she's good at what she does. I know this. If she said that she was telling little white lies for me, I would, I'd fire her. Now I heard she just left of her own accord. Don't know. Don't care. You don't go on. Yeah, I've told little white lies for the president. Oh, he's he's running a bit late. Oh, his car broke down. Oh, the dog ate his homework. You don't need to make excuses for the president of the United States. He got held up in a meeting. He's he's making the press wait because he has no respect for him. Tell them the truth. You have a person who says, I want transparency. You know, it's that's another p- funny thing about all of this. Donald Trump gets on Twitter. He says, Sessions is a tool. I don't know why I hired this guy. I'm really mad he won't do what his job is supposed to be and go after the people who are committing crimes. And people go, look at him. He's attacking Sessions on it. Let me tell you something, folks. Barack Obama promised you transparency. Do you think he was really happy with Hillary Clinton? Hmm? Do you think that at the, on the heels of Benghazi, This clown could say, yeah, I have the utmost faith in my secretary of state who just got four people killed and could have gotten dozens more if it were not for special forces. Yeah, I'm proud of her. Name me something he could be proud of her accomplishments as secretary of state. Legitimately. Nothing. What about John Kerry? As feckless as the rest. Joe Biden, biggest idiot on the planet. And I could go down the list. Susan Rice, incompetent to her rotten core. The FBI, James Comey, on down the line. Does he ever say anything about him? No, because Mr. Transparency wouldn't say anything. Why? Because he was as crooked as they are. He was as incompetent as they are. He couldn't say anything. So you got all these incompetents over here and the media doesn't say a word. Oh, Donald, Barack Obama doesn't have turnover yeah, really? Why not? He, he's losing elections across the board. Lost a thousand seats. You think he would go to somebody and go, this is crazy. Trade policy. Crazy bad. You think he'd follow his, his commerce secretary? Nope. He didn't fire anybody for anything. Even when they were embroiled in scandal, they got promoted, not fired. But the left will tell you, oh, look at him. His, he didn't have any turmoil in his administration. He said that. That crazy clown said he didn't have any turmoil in his administration. D- let me just say, Eric Holder and Fast and Furious, uh, d- contempt of Congress. Let me tell you something, folks. If you think that uh, Barack Obama didn't have any turmoil in his, in his presidency, wait till this year when there's turmoil for outside of his presidency. These people can, they can front and they can do whatever they want. Debbie Washington Schultz will go down this year. The I want investigation is back coming back. Hillary Clinton 
will go down this year. James Comey will go down and many members of the FBI, McCabe, Strzok, Lisa Page, and many others. Mueller may end up in trouble in the hot seat for all of what he's done. And finally, Barack Obama. But they tell you, oh, he didn't have any controversy. He was okay. Nobody, very few people left the Obama administration. Yeah. Obama needed bad people around him. He needed the most incompetent people. So it made him look good. Joe Biden makes Obama look studly. Just, you don't have to believe me, folks. Look look at who the, the batting order coming up. Kamala Harris, Cory Booker. Those are the new names, the new fresh faces. Idiots both. And who else? It's a bunch of retreads. Elizabeth Warren's now saying, I really am an Indian. Don't need to stop it. I'm an Indian. <laughs> and you got Hillary Clinton who still thinks she's in the mix. Joe Biden thinks he's in the mix. Uh, Bernie Sanders thinks he's in the mix and all the other hapless rubes over there that think they're in the mix. They think they're going to do good in 2018. They don't even turn over their own people when they know they're losers. To, to even be talking about Hillary Clinton again is a joke. I dare. It, it, let me just say this again. I want the leftists to hear me. Hear me. Hear me now. Hear me clear. I dare you to run with Hillary Clinton. If she's so popular and so powerful, I dare any politician that's out there run with Hillary. I dare any politician that's out there sign up Obama. I want to see it. If Elizabeth Warren is a legitimate candidate, get her on the ballot. Sign her up. Get her to to help you run. If Kamala Harris is going to help your campaign, get her down. I'd love to see it. Cory Booker, Joe Biden, Bernie Sanders, not one of them will add to the fabric of any race that's out there, any race going on in the country. The only way the Democrats win races are very simple. They pour money in and they cheat. That's it. If you really got campaign finance reform and you limited, you know, crazy money and and a fraudulent uh, money into these campaigns and you stop them from cheating at the polls, Democrats wouldn't win an election in the in the heart of, of Illinois, of Chicago. They would lose that. Don't believe them for a second, folks, you're watching a complete distortion what that's not even the right word it, a, a turnover and how business is done in Washington see Washington is business as usual it's been that way for decades and so Donald Trump has people leave and people oh look at that this is terrible people leaving the Trump administration is good news it is the same thing that happens in corporate America they bring on a bunch of people they start work they look at how the work is going and they go you know what we got to start cutting staff these people are not qualified now you may move people around and and maybe Donald Trump could do some of that and they go I don't know don't know don't care but what I do know is this if you cannot do your job you should be gone and there are people quite frankly that wouldn't be gone if the left hadn't been, you know, playing their crooked games. Michael Flynn's a good example. He wouldn't have been gone. He'd still be President Trump's national security advisor, and he'd be a good one. But there are people that needed to be gone. They didn't understand what Donald Trump was doing. They didn't understand what his mission was. They were used to politics as usual. I'll use Reince Priebus as an example. I'll get to him here in a second in more detail. But Reince is a, he, he's used to the way things were done in the past. He wasn't used to where the future was going. Trump wanted people that understood Republican politics, but he wanted people that understood where he was taking it. And Reince Priebus was not there for that. Katie, what's her face? She wasn't prepared for that. In fact, I think she was a waste of space to begin with. But Trump let her come along because she was part of Priebus's team. So he got the lay of the land. And as I said to you guys, I warned you, the left, that the biggest warning is Trump saying, I'm just understanding how to do this and still look at the year that I had. We got more to talk about this. Kevin Jackson on the Black Sphere Radio Network. Do you owe back taxes to the IRS or state? The secret to avoiding the IRS nightmare is to seek professional representation. 
My friends at Security Tax Associates provide the most cost-effective and ethical representation in the industry while helping to avoid seizures, levies, and wage garnishments. Security Tax Associates is here to ensure that the appropriate steps are taken to permanently eliminate any possibility of future tax burdens once and for all. For a free, no-obligation consultation, contact Security Tax Associates, 844-779-4177. That's 844-779-4177. 844-779-4177 or visit them at securitytaxassociates.com. to identity politics this is the kevin jackson radio show welcome back everybody the left are they they don't get it they don't understand how business works they don't understand turnover they don't understand that incompetence gets you fired in the real world not promoted as it does in government welcome back everybody kevin jackson here kjradio.com 844-551-8255 jot that number down because I'd love to hear from you. Donald Trump, his administration has lost 11 people since he started. And people, it's unprecedented. That's the most ever. And I'm going, congratulations, Donald Trump. Congratulations for getting it. Congratulations for understanding that you don't have to kowtow to the political process that gets people into government and then leaves them there. We are known, you know, what the one of the biggest issues is, is coming up for, for Congress people turnover term limits. How often do they stay? They stay all the time. It's one of it's the bane of our existence as citizens because we go. They just root in like a tick and finally bury themselves under the skin. And then they start poisoning the body politic, getting bigger and bigger and bigger. When does it end? Well, it doesn't. It's been business as usual, folks, for decades. And Donald Trump says, no, enough is enough. And he proves it. He says, look, I'll hire a staff. And as long as you're useful, as long as you're doing good things and you're pushing the envelope, I want you here. When you go back and you analyze each of the people that Trump has put into place, Mnuchin and various others, you'll go back at some point. If they're still there, it's because their policies work and because Donald Trump sees in them the vision for what he has for that particular office. If you're going to be Donald Trump's secretary of state, you better share his vision. They Now they tried to build in this. Oh, he's got a problem with Rex Tillerson. I don't know if he does or if he doesn't, but what I will say is this Donald Trump looks at Tillerson who ran Exxon mobile. He says, you're a brilliant, bright guy, you know, running a larger company than Donald Trump ever, ever ran, but I got elected president and This is my foreign policy. These are the objectives. Rex, go do it. And I believe Rex Tillerson's still here because he's able to do it. And I also believe that Donald Trump sees in Tillerson his ability to get it done. He understands that in order to run a corporation like Exxon, you better, you got to have, you know, a genitalia of steel. But you also have to have a lot of tact. You have to know how to get things done at the global level. That's why he brought Tillerson on. Is he going to last? I don't know. I, I said right now, he's got to get rid of, uh, who was the guy? He, I, I talked about him the other day. He, he's embroiled in scandal now. He did a trip. He brought his wife. He lied. Yeah, you got to go. Some of it is self-inflicted. Tom Price, he resigned. Use of private jets for government travel. 26 chartered planes during his tenure. He wasn't there very long. A million dollars of taxpayers' money, domestic and military flights to Asia, Africa, and Europe. And uh, he, he said, I put, I put people first. You know, he was an orthopedic surgeon. I put people first. This is what I did and all that. Well, you didn't. And Trump said, I need your letter of resignation. Gone. There you have it. Gorka. I think Gorka had a, has a philosophical problem with a couple of the people that remain in the Trump administration. They wanted Gorka out because Gorka is a hardcore conservative. 
He was deputy advisor focused on national security and counterterrorism. And he was a paid consultant for the Trump campaign at the time. And he re- resigned. And there's been nobody that's talked about Gorka's resignation as anything but that. I think Gorka said, I can't do this job and do it to the best, to, to the ability that I want to do it to satisfy the, the goals of President Trump with the people in place. And he left. Good for him. And it's OK. Gorka remains a very strong advocate of what President Trump is doing. So, you know, no harm, no foul. Steve Bannon. What did Bannon do? Bannon pretended to be bigger than what he was. And, and, and as I've said before, at the time Bannon left, I, did, I never understood the relationship to begin with. But Trump saw something in it. You know, maybe it was the Breitbart connection. I don't know. But he's gone. And I'll be honest with you. I think it's a good thing. Just from from an outsider's point of view, I think it's a good thing. He worked for the the, the campaign. And I think Bannon's one of these guys that tried to make it appear that he was doing more than what he was doing. And I think President Trump's like, look, when you do good things, I'm going to credit you. If you go out there and act as if you're bigger than what your role is, you're going to get cut. That's what politicians do. They buff up their resumes. They lie. They make themselves bigger than life when they're nothing. Look at Hillary Clinton. She's a clinic in that. Look at Barack Obama. Holy cow. Can you get any more? you know, bigger than your, than your resume with Barack Obama. Would you elect Barack Obama president based on his resume? Be honest. Of course you wouldn't. He ran on anything but his resume. So when Donald Trump finally gets frustrated, here's how you can stay off of a guy like Donald Trump's crappy list, right? Do your job. Just do it. Do it. Don't worry about the credit. Do your job. We're implementing a project right now that we're I'm, I'm telling you right now, I will go and hand this project over to the appropriate person within the Trump administration. And we will, I mean, we're going to say, yes, we're working with the Trump administration because we got to get our pound of flesh, but it'll be in conjunction with them and they can have it. If it helps move the needle, brings more blacks to vote for the Republicans that deserve it. It makes blacks think before they vote for Democrats, because that's all I care about. I don't care about them voting for Republicans. Then fine. That's what our plan is. We have another plan that's going to really revamp. I'm talking about revolutionize what's going on in education. And we're going to put the spotlight on these clowns, these cockroaches in education. And when we do it, if the Trump administration wants to say we were helping with that, then congratulations to them. We will gladly share the spotlight. I mentioned Reince Priebus earlier in terms of leaving. If Reince Priebus wasn't able to wrap his arms around what Donald Trump wanted to do and the personalities of the people involved, he didn't deserve to be in a position he was. And I'll g- give you another example. Omarosa Maginot, who's now out, you know, selling books and on Big Brother and all this other crap. Should she have been there in the first place? My opinion, absolutely not. Did she help in some strange way? Probably so in ways that I don't quite understand. And that's okay. You know, it isn't for us to always know, oh, that's a great choice or a bad choice or whatever. Uh, Omarosa, Democrat, from what I'm told, certainly a leftist in my opinion, but she did keep the black issues in front of Donald Trump. And in some small way, probably it helped you know, to, to bring a few more black people over here and there. I don't know. I'm not going to give her a whole lot of credit for that, but it certainly raised the visibility. She was able to bring in HBCU folks to come in. These are the historically black colleges and universities. And Donald Trump, you you know, did that. But when it was time for her to go, there was nobody that wanted, that that was like, Oh my gosh, no, you can't let Omarosa go. She's amazing. Of course not. Cause she wasn't. But, you know, the, is the press going to tell you? No, the press wants to milk it. What she got to say? Give us the dirt on on Donald Trump. Omarosa was on Stephen Colbert. What's it like to be on the inside and all that? You want to know why they have to ask those questions? Because none of them are on the inside. That's why, you know, when somebody tells you, well, we've got it from a, an unknown source, Sid, it means we're guessing. We don't know what's happening. We, because we don't have any, we don't have any embedded people the way we did, the way Obama used the, the press like lap dogs. Folks, let me tell you, be happy. 
that Donald Trump is doing what he's doing. They're not letting up on him. And th- th- forget the success. Best year one president, bar none in modern history, possibly in the history of the republic. And you hear all you hear is negativity from him. I told people many times when Trump got into office, I said the day of politics, the way it used to be done is over. Donald Trump will fire people. He's used to it. He doesn't like it. But if you're not meeting the objective, he will do it. I said, get used to that. And it's no longer considered turmoil. That is business as usual. And he will keep doing it until he gets the best person, the person that understands what he wants to accomplish. You do that. You have a job for life. Not only that, when he's done with the presidency, if he's still you know, alive and kicking and wants to do something else, he'll bring you into his organization. You want you got to perform. And see, that's the thing that we've no longer required of government. That's why the Tea Party, Tea Party Community dot org exists is because we want accountability. You wanted when you hire a contractor, you wanted when you uh, hire a sitter to watch your kids, you want people accountable, people you can trust. What's wrong with that? Versus, hey, people got killed in Benghazi. Susan Rice, here's a promotion. Hillary Clinton, why don't you run for president? He won't stop until he's the top rated radio talk show host in America. What kind of weird competitive freak are you? This is the Kevin Jackson Radio Show. This is the Kevin Jackson Radio Show. There are a lot of signs of growing up, and one of them is when you stop blaming other people for the things that occur in your life. Welcome, everybody. Kevin Jackson here. Glad you guys are with me. It is the Kevin Jackson Show, kjradio.com. The, Albert Ellis said this, and I've paraphrased it. Many of you probably have said something similar, but he said the best years of your life are the ones in which you decide your problems are your own. You realize that you control your own destiny. Now, let me tell you something. The left does not want minorities of any sort, special interests, whatever you want to call these groups. What they don't want them to know is they control their own destiny. I would def- I don't have any daughters, but I would defy anyone to tell me, would you tell your daughter, oh, man, you know, you are going to face a cruel world and men are going to get you. And if you're a white girl, well, you know, you're going to you got this uh, uh white privilege and if you're a white boy well you've got toxic masculinity and all these other things or do you tell your kids look you're going to face problems uh you know trials and tribulations as the bible would say and you're going to have to overcome them because that's what life is about that's how you grow when you're a child people deal with your problems the problems that they shield you from problems that's what your parents are for society shields you from problems when you're a child they say that child's not eating i'll feed him that child doesn't have a home i'll find them a home that child can't get to school or can't do this doesn't understand can't you know uh needs a tutor whatever society takes care of you and then there comes a point where society your parents everybody says you're out of the nest the problem with government the problem with Democrats, the problem with progressives, with leftists, with bonehead, moron, moronic, idiotic people. I did say they were leftists, right? The problem with these people is they never want you to grow up. They want you to constantly have an excuse for why you can't achieve something, why you couldn't make something happen. Somebody, there's a boogeyman for everybody. If you're a Mexican, particularly if you're illegal, there's a boogeyman. If you're a Muslim, there's a boogeyman. If you're a woman, there's a boogeyman. If you're a white, uh, well, no, take that back. If you're black, anything, there's a boogeyman. There's a boogeyman for which gives you an excuse. And here's the problem. No matter what they tell you, at the end of the day, life doesn't care. They can tell you that. They can make you feel that way. They can pretend that government's going to take care of all your problems. I promise you, government isn't going to be there any more than the police are going to be. The police come after the fact. Government comes after the fact. And here's the deal. Even if they come after the fact, whatever crime's been committed to you has been committed. 
So when you finally learn that your best line of defense, your best line of protection, your best line of offense even, and defense, the yin and the yang of life, begin with you. You're your best defender and you're your best offender. And hopefully, when you offend, you are doing something positive. You are creating a company. You are creating a circumstance that is positive to your being, your well-being. If you're a defender, I hope you're good at it. I hope you've gone through the tutelage of, of having had lots of scrapes and scraps in your life. So by the time it matters for you, so just using my life as an example. There are many, you know, I fought from the time I was four or five years old. You know, you know, I'm talking about in the street, fighting my cousins, my brother, my whatever. I fought, 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 learned how to fight. And when it came time for somebody to, you know, where it mattered to me, a matter of principle or whatever, I was more than prepared. Much more sore, so sore, much more so than my opponents. I'm not talking about in the ring. That's a whole other thing there. I mean, you obviously want to be ready for that. I'm talking about when it matters. Somebody just like threatening your life or threatening to, you know, it's something that could impact you going forward. Oh, yeah. I was more than prepared. There are many people out there that have had a run in with me. that went, oh, that didn't go the way I thought it was. Prepped, man. And it was all those little micro battles. Uh, I got asked a question the other day when I was speaking at the Dorchester conference Kevin what how do you handle microaggressions and I went oh you know where everybody feels like they're upset about this or that I go I ignore them I hope I aggress you I hope I make you think I hope I challenge every sensibility that you have and whether what the topic is Kevin one guy asked me about black culture I go really so let's talk about black culture what is black culture because black culture in the 1940s was we were the hardest working people. We were religious, spiritual to uh, not to a fault, but to a good fault. We believed in education. And I'm not talking about the one you get today. I'm talking about the real one. We were the most trusted people on the planet. We were the, we had the most whole families. We we bucked the system when the system needed bucking, not because we wanted to use it as an excuse. And I could go on. That was black culture in the 1950s. I said, and then, then the cult, black culture of the 1960s came into protecting ourselves and, and being proud of being black. You, you know, you can look at these black exploitation films and, and, and you know, Cleopatra Jones and all this. It, we were warriors against the system, an oppressive system, a system built by Democrats. That was black culture of the system of the of the 60s. Black culture of the 80s was about a renaissance of black people, a second renaissance, because the first one came in the 20s with the Harlem Renaissance movement dance and couture and things like that but came the 80s you you got a the the, the black uh, people became revived in things we we were you know mainstream culturally we had uh the high profile blacks like the jeffersons moving on up to the east side right we had room 222 which was a, a show about a black school where kids weren't getting kicked out every day P, the, uh, black educators were actually educating kids and cared about them and it was it was a really cool show denise nicholas one of the most beautiful women in the world was in that show and i could go on w w barefoot in the park with scoey mitchell it was a, a middle uh you know middle income black family that was doing great. It wasn't your typical, you know, yes, a boss and all that. So we had that black culture. And then you fast forward to today where kids are wearing their pants under their butt and, you know, got grills and, and the uniform of the thug and, and all this. Is that the black, which black culture are you talking about? It's culture. It's American culture. And uh, there are aspects of it that, that grow, you know, that come and go, but, this isn't the, uh, you know, do you, what do you mean? Black culture. You got white people wanting to uh, cultivate black culture like Dola's all. That's the culture she wants to wear dreadlocks and, and be a sister. Lots of aspects to black culture. Anyway, we got a lot to talk about. We'll be back. This is the Kevin Jackson Radio Show. Do you owe back taxes to the IRS or state the secret to avoiding the IRS nightmare is to seek professional representation. 
My friends at Security Tax Associates provide the most cost-effective and ethical representation in the industry while helping to avoid seizures, levies, and wage garnishments. Security Tax Associates is here to ensure that the appropriate steps are taken to permanently eliminate any possibility of future tax burdens once and for all. For a free, no-obligation consultation, contact Security Tax Associates, 844-779-4177. That's 844-779-4177. 844-779-4177. Or visit them at securitytaxassociates.com. Beth Cook Moranville author of Closer Than Your Breath, A Book of Hope. Hope, that wonderful, wonderful four-letter word that you may feel completely out of. I wrote this book to give you great hope. It's not too late. If fetal position is an all-too-familiar place for you, I understand. If the next 60 seconds are too long, this book is for you. Wherever you are right now, whether you're dealing with divorce or death or sickness, take hope. You are going to make it through this pain. Don't roll your eyes. I've walked this road and I know it. The best is yet to come. Closer Than Your Breath, a book of hope from author and speaker Beth Cook Moranville can be found on Amazon.com or Kindle.com. For more information, visit CloserThanYourBreath.com or on Facebook at Closer Than Your Breath. This is the Kevin Jackson Radio Show. Welcome back, everybody. Kevin Jackson here. I speak often of signs. Let me slow that down. Kevin Jackson here. I speak often of signs. And there are things that you need to be paying attention to. And my good buddy, Joe Piscopo, uh, was on Cavuto and they were talking about the Oscars. And I want to get into that and I'm going to wrap it around quite a bit that's going on. Late night TV, uh, scam artist. <laughs> they call themselves comedians. Jennifer Lawrence, etc. And maybe we'll finish out the hour with it. There's a lot to talk about in this respect. But there are lots of signs going on that I want you guys to understand as to how you're winning and how you need to recognize these signs. So let's begin with Joe Piscopo being interviewed by Neil Cavuto, and he's talking about the Oscars. You know, one of my favorite people uh, on the planet, not him, uh, but Joe Piscopo is here to talk about the Academy Awards big show on Sunday night where they have promised, I guess, they're going to try to tone down the politics somewhat. Uh, Jimmy Kimmel indicating he will do the same. Um, What do you think? I think that Jimmy Kimmel has it in his power to bring the country together on Sunday night, Mr. Cavuto. He really does. Every morning on the radio, when we go on the radio, I am, you know, the great communicator. Yes. I am the great translator because I see the news. I see the divide. I see the hate. The country has got to come together. And so what we do in the morning, every morning, and I, as I start watching the news at night, Neil, and, I, and I'm all going, this is not what we feel. This is not right. The spin. Who's right. got a special ulterior motive? We translate it in the morning. And there's and, a lot of anger, right? Yeah. Oh, but I think what the, the Academy Committee said, you know, tone it down because we're alienating a lot of people. Yeah, right? yeah you well, good point, but but Jimmy's good. Jimmy's so he's good. He's very good, right? He is good. But, you but go he's up. also politicized a lot. He's not going after Republicans. No, oh, I know. So, you know, uh, the Obamacare uh, stuff. I know, with Mr. Colbert as well. Right. They do it, and people are tired of it. I know because I listen to the people when they call on the radio. Tone down the politics. Do you think that came out of nowhere? Welcome back, everybody. Kevin Jackson. It's the Kevin Jackson Show, kjradio.com. By the way, if you want to call the show, 844-551-8255. Tone down the politics. Did that come out of nowhere? Of course not. Of course not. I'm going to prove it to you today. I'm going to prove it to you. Let me tell you what's happening. Hollywood is finally saying, you know what, guys? We got to stop this. We're we're suffering. Folks, you're winning. We are winning. Now, did anybody go see Red Sparrow? Did you guys see Red Sparrow? <laughs> if you told me you saw Red Sparrow seriously, I would I would have to I would have to probably take off this 
let me take this off now. I have to take off this microphone and just go ballistic on you. I don't care if you want. Look, if you want to watch Jennifer Lawrence crap, watch it. I'm going to get into her in just a minute. <laughs> uh, not in that Chelsea Handler kind of way. But by the way, I did a, a Chelsea Handler reference in my speech and uh, a lot of the old people didn't get it. But the younger people came up to me and were cracking up going, Kevin, I couldn't believe you said that. But a lot of people went over their heads and I went, that's OK. A speech should be something for everybody in the audience. And I certainly gave them that. Anyway, back to this. Cavuto and Piscopo talking about the Oscars. I didn't watch it. I'm not going to talk about it beyond this to say they told Jimmy Kimmel, tone it down. Don't make this about Donald Trump. So he's been hired. He's anti-Trump. He's been talking about gun control, talking about Obamacare. He, If it weren't for Jimmy Kimmel uh, being able to talk about Donald Trump, he wouldn't have a show. He has lost his humor base because he doesn't understand how life has changed for him. And really, it's changed for the better. Joe Piscopo says we need to bring the country together. He translates the news in, in a... In, then Capiscopo, uh, Cavuto, <laughs> Cavuto says, yeah, but they're tone, They're asking him to tone it down. Are you alienating your audience? Bada bing, bada boom. The, let me tell you, the, the Oscars went to Jimmy Kimmel and said, look, we want to hire you, but we need you to tone it down. You think they would have done that if you weren't winning? If conservatism wasn't winning? They specifically went to this dude and said, look, I, you, you, you better not be beating up on Trump people. Your job is to make Hollywood a, for everybody. Think about this, people. What kind of films do you think are now going to be greenlit and plan or in the planning phases? Do you think they're really going to keep pushing an anti-Trump, anti-conservative, anti-American, anti-gun message? By the way, Hollywood has never pushed an anti-gun message. The good guy always has a bad behind gun. You know what I'm saying? A bad butt gun. I'm cleaning it up for you. That's what the good guy has. I'm, folks, this is a sign. You can miss it. Let me give you another sign, a Hollywood sign. You want one? Okay. A Harvey Weinstein casting couch appeared in Hollywood. Have you seen this? It's a, a casting couch. It's like a gold bronze statue. I mean, I say gold. It's bronze, but, it, you know, like they painted gold over it. And it's got Harvey Weinstein on this kind of, I don't know what you call it, a chaise lounge. And and he's got his arm up and he's, I, I don't even know if he's in a robe. I can't remember. But, and, and it's it all, over, they put, posted this thing prominently in Hollywood. I think they they took it down. But somebody in advance of the Oscars put this there. And they said they're not going to talk about Kimmel came out publicly and said, no, 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 I'm not going to talk about Harvey Weinstein and the Me Too movement, sexual harassment and all that because it's all gone. Yeah, it's gone, right? It, I don't know if you guys know this, but Hollywood's now clean. Yeah, they exercised it. They brought in that little lady from the poltergeist and she said, you are now all clean and they exercised it. So Hollywood no longer has a sexual predator problem. Young actresses are now safe to just go and get their movies or whatever else. And you're going to see a host of new faces and all that. And they're all going to have gotten to the top, not by sleeping to the top, but on their merits. Yeah. Look, I don't, I'm <laughs> all I can tell you, you better look at these signs. You got a guy who's anti-Trump who wants to do, who's going to do the Oscars and the Oscars tell him, don't make it political. You have somebody, I don't know who it was, who's decided to mock Hollywood and who said, hey, uh, we, <laughs> we're going to put this casting couch of Weinstein as a reminder of what you, are, what you represent. Conan O'Brien mocked Oprah. Yeah, Conan O'Brien. Do we have that clip? How long is it? Can we play it? What's the, what's the, what's the length? Yeah, let's play it. Oprah is in the news in a new interview that she just gave. Oprah said that she asked God if she should run for president, and so far she hasn't heard back. <laughs> that's what she said. That's what, that's what she said. Said she hasn't heard back. Sure. 
Yeah, when uh, reached for comment, God said he's still working up the courage to speak to Oprah. <laughs> kind of intimidating. God's like... So there you have it. By the way, Joy Behar even backed off of her statement about Mike Pence's God. Folks, these are signs. And I'm going to give you one of the bigger signs when we come back. We don't have time to get into it right now. I said I have to cover it too short. All these signs that show that you're winning. Now, they're, they're incremental. They're baby steps. But you have to understand you're making a difference. This is the Kevin Jackson Radio Show. Kevin Jackson Radio Show. You know, and it's instead of a thousand people coming to see me, it's ten thousand people coming. So to is see Amy me. the star of this? Uh, I think Aziz is the star. Amy's it's like Aziz and Amy, and then there's a bunch of the, our the regular mortals. You dated me. Amy, right? Yes, we did. Was yes, that fun? Did. Yeah, we, we she let me have sex with her and everything. Man, it was great. No, uh, we uh, had a blast. No, that's good. What do you make of her career? Oh, I think that everything I touch turns to gold. You know, so of course, uh, I think that she's having a great career and she should be very thankful for what I've done for her. <laughs> that was Anthony Jeselnik, <laughs> who dated Amy Schumer. He's a funny dude. He's funny. I mean, he admits it. Hey, he admits he dated Amy Schumer, so you got to give him credit for that. Come on. Come on, y'all. Shake. Come on. Give it up. Glad you guys are here. Kevin Jackson, who you're listening to, kjradio.com is how you can find out more about us, 844-551-8255. The uh, reason why I bring up Amy Schumer is because one of her BFFs is Jennifer Lawrence. And I've warned you guys, I've warned you, I've tried to encourage you to look for signs, look differently at the news. Don't. If you take the news in literally, you will be devastated. You will be indoctrinated. You'll be one of the zombie stooges that walks around the earth going, uh, Hollywood does nothing wrong. And, you know, Barack Obama is amazing, was an amazing president and Trump should be imprisoned or whatever else. Uh, Hillary won the popular vote. You, you have all these mantras that you repeat if you're part of the idiot class. Or you can look for the signs. I've told you about the signs, signs that things are changing, signs that things are not as they seem. And that's what you should be looking for. That's how you should discern the news. And part of it is you don't believe the news. That's that, I mean, that's a, that's strategy one. But now we're getting to the point where the news is going to be tricky. They're going to go, here's a little bit of truth and here's some lies. Well, let me tell you what's happening right now. There's a big sign going on right now in Hollywood. And it began last night at the Oscars when they supposedly I didn't watch it, but they didn't talk a lot about politics. It wasn't a bash Trump thing, as all the other galas leading up to this have been. Think about it. The Emmys, the Oscars, the Tonys, the this, that, and the other over the past year have all been bash Trump. Punch him in the face. So we had a year of this. Now we've got Oscars part due under Donald Trump. And you know what they're saying? Don't bash him. At least that's what I I heard. They, They didn't bash him. I don't know. I don't watch it. I got some clips. Maybe we'll do. I don't it really. I don't think I want to go. But anyway, here's my point. What happened leading up to that? Jennifer Lawrence said this. She said it was disgusting how Hillary Clinton attacked President Trump supporters and admitted it is, quote, not wise for celebrities to speak about politics because it hurts their careers. Do I need to give you the statistics of Hollywood and what's going on over there over the past year, two years even? Well, I happen to have the numbers. These are from 2017, 2016, 2015. Here's what they wrote in Variety. The final number for the 2017 North American box office hall will decline by about 2.5% from last year's record-setting $11.38 billion even with Star Wars, The Last Jedi, adding more than $500 million. So, in 2017, you knocked Hollywood right in the kisser. You punched them. 
And even with the $400 million they earned from Star Wars The Last Jedi, they they dropped 2.5%. So Star Wars couldn't save them. They said as of Christmas Day, the domestic total for the year was $10.68 million, or 2.75% behind the same time a year ago. In the final six days of 2017, they estimated, because that's when the report was. So the final 2017 number, they said, was around $11.1 billion, $270 million behind last year. And then here are the other numbers. That would mean the final domestic earnings, earnings will, will also finish slightly behind 2015's $11.14 billion, the second highest year on record. And it will be the only, only the third time the industry has made it to $11 billion. Now you say, well, Kevin, it looks like things are going up. No, no, no. Let me tell you, the expenses of Hollywood have gone up dramatically. The amount of money it took to to, that it's taking to make these films is eating into the profits. So the numbers, the number has grown, but it's also been declining slightly each year. And last year, even with The Last Jedi coming in with 400 million of those dollars, it made it to $11.1 billion, but take out The Last Jedi and, and a movie like that, that's at, that, you know, it's a blockbuster, and it would have fallen even more than the 2.5%. Now, that's not by accident, people. That's because of you. That's because of me. I'm not going to see movies. You got a Samuel L. Jackson film, which all of them have him in there and somewhere. He's the black dude in the film. I don't go see it. Jamie Foxx, you know, he doesn't make that many movies, but I don't see him. I don't go see. In fact, I don't go see movies much anymore at all. Now, contrast that Netflix, by the way, owned by a bunch of Libby's, but at least they play the movies. Netflix is doing well. At least that's what I'm told. Let me go on and finish telling you what uh, Jennifer Lawrence had to say. Jennifer Lawrence, as I said earlier has been what I believe is an outspoken critic of the Trump administration. She's been part of the Hollywood problem. She's been one of these people that's been talking about, you know, politics from a, from a Hollywood perspective, how she doesn't like it. Her best friend's Amy Schumer, who hates Donald Trump, loved Hillary Clinton. Uh, need I say more? Now, I don't know. Like I said, I, I haven't followed her particular politics, but I believe she's a lefty and I've been, you know, I've certainly looked, been following her movie career because everybody made her out to be the best thing since sliced bread. She was the next Kate Hath, uh, Hepburn or whoever. I don't know who the big you know, next Meryl Streep. We know that over the past year, we've watched these Holly weirdos all come out for the most part, all come out dogging Donald Trump. And there have been a few naysayers. I'm going to go see, by the way. Uh, Richard Gere in the remake of uh, of the Charles Bronson film. I'm going to go see his. You want to know why I'm going to go watch uh, uh, his film? I just forgot his name. Uh, Bruce Willis's film. I'm getting old. The reason I'm going to go watch it is because he wore a Trump hat onto a late night TV show and defended Donald Trump and said, yeah, I'm for Trump. I hope you go see his film, Death Wish. I'm going to go see it. I'm going to support Bruce Willis's film. And the reason for that is because he supports us. So there you go. So anyway, Hollywood is changing. Jennifer Lawrence, who I believe has been anti-Trump, she said she's getting out of movies for a year in order or whatever time frame in order to go become politically active. Is she leaving because she's against Trump and says, look, if I'm going to go and become an activist, let be an activist and then I'll go back to movies. Good luck with that. But how do you say that's what your next course of action is going to be? And then you talk about how it was disgusting how Hillary Clinton attacked President Trump supporters, called us deplorables, as you guys know. And she says it's not wise for celebrity to speak out about politics because it hurts their careers. And that's exactly what she's doing. She's speaking out about politics. She says the Democrats made a huge mistake by chastising Trump supporters. And that was disgusting to me. That was in Vanity Fair. Of course, they're not going to vote for Hillary Clinton. They're going to vote for Donald Trump. You laughed at them when their plight is very real. 
Now, here's where they talk about what her politics were. See, I didn't even finish looking at this. Don't look at me like I'm, I, I don't I, I have to skim. How am I going to get all this information in? Anyway, they said Lawrence, who supported Clinton during the 2016 presidential election, said Trump was, quote, a big, powerful man in a nice suit pointing at you and going, I'm going to make you rich. It's so appealing. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> That's what America is. America represents that big, powerful person pointing at you saying, I'm going to make you rich. You have an opportunity to really do something with your life. But look, I don't want to get lost in all of that. What I want to remind you is the sign. A staunch Hillary Clinton, Holly Weirdo supporter, or Holly Weirdo who supported Hillary Clinton, (laughs) She has now backtracked. She's now saying, hey, guys, we shouldn't have criticized you. It was a mistake to do it. Hillary Clinton shouldn't have done it. Here's Trump's message. And here's why it resonated. She says uh, she admitted that waiting into politics is not the best path for celebrities to take. I've always thought it was a good idea to stay out of politics. Now, This is where I get into, this is what makes me want to, like, get after people like her. She thought it would, I've always thought it's a good idea to stay out of politics as she wades into politics and campaigns for Hillary Clinton. Kevin Jackson on the Black Sphere Radio Network. Do you owe back taxes to the IRS or state? The secret to avoiding the IRS nightmare is to seek professional representation. My friends at Security Tax Associates provide the most cost-effective and ethical representation in the industry while helping to avoid seizures, levies, and wage garnishments. Security Tax Associates is here to ensure that the appropriate steps are taken to permanently eliminate any possibility of future tax burdens once and for all. For a free, no-obligation consultation, contact Security Tax Associates, 844-779-4177. That's 844-779-4177. 844-779-4177. Or visit them at securitytaxassociates.com. To identity politics. This is the Kevin Jackson Radio Show. Welcome back, everybody. Kevin Jackson here. We're talking about signs, signs coming from Hollywood that things are changing. Let me tell you, I'm going to give you some predictions. You're going to see a lot less rancor out of Hollywood based on Donald Trump's performance in 2018 than you did in 2017. Now, that doesn't make me Nostradamus because it's already happened. The Oscars. From what I'm told, I didn't watch it, but I I got some preliminary stuff and they said Jimmy Kimmel was not supposed to talk bad, you know, make it about politics. That's what I was told. You, You guys can verify if that happened or not. But that's number one. Number two, you're going to hear less about I'm now. This is a prediction. I don't know if it's the case, you know, if any there's been any vindication or validation of this so far, but you're going to hear a lot less coming out of Hollywood about Donald Trump against Donald Trump. And here's the next prediction. At some point, you're going to hear more Hollywood people saying positive things about Donald Trump than you have in the past. They're suddenly going to soften. They're not going to come out and say, I support him. They're going to say things like, well, I do support Trump's policy on. And you're going to start hearing that type of thing. You're going to start hearing them talk about the the tax benefits and how it's helped the poor and helped the middle class and things like this. It won't be positive for Trump. It'll be positive for Trump's policies. That's going to be that buffer zone for the Holly weirdos. Now, we've been talking about Jennifer Lawrence, who's pretty much done a mea culpa. She said it was disgusting how Hillary Clinton attacked Trump supporters. She didn't say this during the cycle, during the the 2016 election, the 18 election cycle. She said it after the fact, but she said it was disgusting how Hillary Clinton attacked President Trump supporters and said it's not wise for celebrities to get involved into politics because it hurts their careers and it certainly has hurt hers. 
It's like the NFL. Kaepernick, who spoke out, you know, on behalf of Black Lives Matter and such and such, not only has it hurt Kaepernick's personal career, but it has hurt the NFL. And folks, you can make all the parallels or whatever that you want, or you can dismiss them. But there are plenty of evidence that when you're bucking Donald Trump, you're you find yourself in big trouble. And this is because it is not about Donald Trump. When Target said we're going to make transgender bathrooms the norm, that wasn't about Donald Trump. That was about America. America doesn't care about the transgender community. They don't. What America cares about is letting human beings do what they want and staying out of the business of the politics of human of, of, of humans. It, you know, I know that sounds weird, but I'm saying the government gets when the government wants to get involved in the transgender bathrooms and the bathrooms where places where people just go to use the bath. That tells you how intrusive it can become. And then when capitalists take that on. It's not good. Starbucks, who decided it was going to chime in on refugee resettlement and promise to hire illegal refugees coming into this country. The Donald Trump, all he had to do was say, look at how stupid they're behaving. And you responded. It wasn't about Trump, folks. It was about America. The Democrats underestimate us all the time. And you know what? You're finally making them pay. The NFL paid. And you know who's paying the most? Colin Kaepernick, a dude who had a hundred and twenty six million dollar contract over, I don't know, seven years or so now sits in his home waiting to see when the phone's going to ring on some cop shooting of a black guy who the black guy probably deserved. It's Colin's like got the bat line, the black line ready to go. And you know what? It ain't going to ring. Sorry, Pavlov. You're not getting the meal or Pavlov's dog, you're not getting a meal. So people are starting to recognize it. Starbucks took a tumble. Target took a tumble. The NFL is taking a tumble. Hollywood, despite the numbers, they lost 2.5% over the previous year. They're relying on Black Panther to bail them out this year. Why do you think they got all the hype going over that? It ain't going to do it. Hollywood's numbers will go down again. 2.5% last year, not a lot, right? Go ask a, a manufacturer, would you do you want to lose 2.5% year year over year for the next 4 years, 5 years, 6 years? Ask any manufacturer worth its weight. Do you would that be okay with you? I already know the answer. So, uh Jennifer Lawrence comes out and says the Democrats made this big mistake. Said you you push people to vote for Trump. Let me tell you something. She, Hillary Clinton didn't push anybody to vote for Trump when she called us deplorable. She pushed people to vote for Trump when she declared she was going to be a candidate for the left. We already know what we we're going to get. More of the same. More lies. More duplicitous Democrat progressive politics. That's what we were going to get. She went on to say this, Jennifer Lawrence, 25 percent of America identifies as liberal and I need more than 25% of Americans to go see my movies. It's not wise, career speaking, to talk about politics. But she said, when Donald Trump got sworn into office, that effing changed. Really? I'll tell you what changed. What changed is how people started viewing Holly Weirdos, and rightfully so. Let me tell you something, folks listening. If you've got kids that, that are part of the, you know, look, we've all... Uh, you know, been in the, the thing where I, I mean, I had a poster of uh, of Farrah Fawcett in, in my room. I thought she was a doll. You know, I mean, I thought she was one of the most beautiful women in the world. But what, however you view, your kids can't respect Hollywood or some entertainer more than they respect you. They can't. I can tell you, my sons, if I go, I don't like. Uh, I, I get a good example. I'm not a LeBron James fan. I can't stand him. I can't stand Stephen Curry. Burt jerseys cut up, burned, you know, they don't want it. Want them. I mean, it's like if, if dad doesn't like it, then we don't care. We don't want it. Good for them. I'm not forcing them. So that's what it should be. Anyway, let's talk a little bit about uh, this change that uh, Jennifer Lawrence is talking about. 
because I've chronicled her movies and I've, I've done a segment on it in the past. If you guys want to look it up at kjradio.com, I said Jennifer Lawrence is overrated and they made a big deal about her. But if you take her biggest movies out, the Hunger Games, uh, the whatever the number of Hunger Games there have been, she's a, a B list actress and pr- practically nobody knows. But She's retiring and not retiring. You know, she's going into hiatus for a little bit because she's going to deal with politics, not as a movie maker. And my suspicion is that the uh, it wasn't Jennifer's choice to stop making films. I believe the studio said, you know what, Jennifer, your films just aren't doing that well anymore. So you might want to take a break. And the politics of it is the reason for it. Jimmy Kimmel. Host of the Oscars. I said in early in the broadcast, I bet you that the Academy or whoever handles the Oscars said, look, Jimmy, you got to lay off Trump stuff. It's crushing us. It's killing our viewership. Look, go, I, here's what I can tell you. I don't I haven't looked. The Oscars did worse this year than it did the year before. All those shows that are dedicated to these Holly weirdos and their self-indulgent you know, oh, I want to win an Oscar because I'm black or I'm a woman and we're not well represented. You know, the Guatemalan midgets haven't won enough Oscars. Then the, All of them are dropping, dropping, dropping. Because you know what? America's sick of these self-indulgent, very wealthy people who want their trophies and want to have an avenue to come bash us. The people who get out there and slug it out every day for a, to work for a living. Back to Jennifer Lawrence. Her new movie's Red Sparrow opened in 3,000 theaters on Friday of last week, $1,972 per theater, so she made $6 million. Let's just say she's no Black Panther. <laughs> $6 million, less than $2,000 a theater, which means that 200 people, you know, the $10 ticket, went to see her movie, 200 people per theater on a Friday for a blockbuster movie star opening. Now here's the review of it. It says Jennifer Lawrence, Red Sparrow spy is no James Bond or Jason Bourne or Jack Bauer, or even for the older folks, Emmer Peel, but that's all good. In the new thriller based on Jason Matthews novel, the actress stars as a Russian rookie secret agent. Who's more likable, more li- liable to use sex as a weapon, say a switchblade in her stilettos, though the film is still pretty violent. So she's going to use sex as her weapon. It got two and a half out of four stars from somebody else. I mean, from one of these, uh, you know, people that rate movies. And uh, I bet it's not even worth two and a half stars. But so that that's her new thriller. And it opens and she can't raise more than two thousand. And by the way, opening day is supposed that's huge. So I don't know what it's going to be for the weekend, but two thousand dollars a theater on opening day. Pretty lame. Now, I don't know what Black Panther did in comparison, but a lot better. He won't stop until he's the top-rated radio talk show host in America. What kind of weird competitive freak are you? This is the Kevin Jackson Radio Show. The Kevin Jackson Radio Show. Welcome, everybody. Kevin Jackson here. Lots going on. An update on toxic masculinity. Yeah, you won't want to miss that. No, that's for sure. And uh, we've already talked a little bit about the Oscars. Well, I, I didn't watch it, so but we've talked about what leading into the Oscars was a sign. I want to give you a lot more signs. I also want to talk to you about the, some of the the craziness that's going on right now in the news. And we'll talk about judges, judge appointments. Uh, SCOTUS is hearing the, uh, the Janice case. That's the union stuff. That was a big discussion when I was, uh, in Oregon, I was speaking at the Dorchester event, uh, sponsor. One of the sponsors was my radio uh, station up in Oregon, KYKN. And, uh, was glad to see Gator and Denise there and get a, to do a little spot on their show. So lots going on on that case. Because it could really crush the unions and probably will. I mean, if, if the if the Supreme Court rules correctly on Janice and I, I'm, I'm no, you know, I'm no Supreme Court judge, but I think I'm pretty bright. And to force somebody to pay union dues when they don't want to be part of the union, I think is ridiculous. 
It's like forcing us to pay for Obamacare. That's ridiculous too. And it's unconstitutional. So if I'm not part of your union, just because you form one at a company, if I vote not to be in it, I shouldn't have to pay a nickel to you. Oh, but Kevin, you benefit. Well, so what? I benefit from the job. I benefit because the company gave me a, a job and they give me a desk and they give me a phone and they expect me to do my job. And if the company says, you know what, Kevin, we're going to pave the parking lot. Well, congratulations to me. I don't my car won't be muddy or dirty would, you know, if I go out there dusty. But that doesn't mean I got to pay for it. The, my job is just my payment, so to speak. Anything that comes from it is a benefit. If the company decides we're going to put in, you know, health care for everybody. Uh, you know, it's available to everybody and some people can some people participate in it and other people don't because they don't have kids. It's still there for me. I don't get charged for it. I mean, this is a common sense argument. I can't wait to see the outcome of this. Hey, we had Angela Merkel of Germany. She finally admitted that there were no go zones in her country. Finally, she didn't want to admit it. She's been bringing in all these Muslims who were out there committing you know, rape culture, you know, and, and, and bringing his rape culture and committing all kinds of sexual assaults on German women. And she finally says, well, we, we cannot have any no go zones. We got that clip. Let's just play that clip. Chancellor Angela has acknowledged the problem of so-called no go zones in the country for the first time during her tenure in office. Artie's Peter Oliver picks up the story. We've seen an unexpected change of tack from Angela Merkel when it comes to talk of no-go areas in Germany. There should not be any no-go zones. There can be no places where nobody dares to go. But these zones exist and they should be named and something must be done about it. Merkel hadn't previously used the incendiary phrase no-go area to describe parts of the country with a high crime rate. But that rate has been going up. The government's own figures released earlier this year point to a 10% rise in violent crime between 2015 and 2016, 90% of which is attributed to young male refugees. There was criticism last year of the way the German media covered the refugee crisis. A highly respected group of researchers said that editors acted as public educators and that the whole refugee crisis and the arrival of hundreds of thousands of people was covered in too favorable a light. Welcome back, everybody. Kevin Jackson. It's the Kevin Jackson Show. KJRadio.com, author of Race Pimping. The multi-trillion dollar business of liberalism. Get my book at racepimping.com. What are we talking about here in Germany? Angela Merkel admitting no-go zones exist. Germany admitting. We've been covering this whole refugee thing with kid gloves, pretending that, oh, you know, that these are good folks coming over for whatever reason. And it is re it's wrecking our economy. It's wrecking our way of life. It's wrecking Germany. Finally admitting it. Let me tell you what's going on, people. For those of you who don't understand what's happening, Donald Trump is exporting American values. American values that say, admit what it is. Admit what something is. Don't ignore a problem. Say what the problem is. I'm going to tell you something else. Donald Trump is beating the Democrats on every... I'm talking about not just in the United States. Worldwide. Democrats, leftists, progressives, call them whatever you want. This socialist ideal... Socialist ideology is being defeated across the world without firing a shot. Donald Trump, all he's doing is saying, I'm going to show you what works. You don't have to believe me, but if you want to keep doing what you're doing, it's going to it's going to backfire. So Angela Merkel, one of the biggest refuge proponent of refugees, bringing them in in droves, ignoring the problems of them, finally has to admit, hmm. We got a problem. Let me tell you something. Uh, Trudeau in Canada, he's considered a joke. He, this is a guy who, I mean, people were looking at this guy's like, he's, a, he's amazing. He's a medieval he's he's Trudeau. He's, he's, a, he's ridiculed. What's, when's the last time you heard anything about Emmanuel Macron of France? Another pretty boy who was supposed to be the poster child of all things left. And you know what he's doing? He's having to come to the realization that he's wrong. We are exporting excellence again. At least the idea of it. 
We're exporting the idea that you are not racist, you are not xenophobic, you are not Islamophobic by questioning what's going on with the culture, what comes in with the culture of Muslims and their wretched religion known as Islam and what it's doing to your country and how it's impacting you. Finally, people are willing to stand up and question. It's happening all over the world. You, the, our news doesn't want to report to you that all around the country, there are, there are places where they're banning. There are places in Italy, towns where they're banning Islam. They're saying you can't practice it here. You, there are places where they're saying you can't bring Muslims into our culture, period. We will not accept them. They're not going to tell you that. But it's happening all over. Google it. Folks, don't don't uh, look. I can only give you so much news. You can only get so much. You can only absorb it. I Look, we try to figure out what we want to tell you to, in these uh, times. It's too much. Google this information for yourselves. You'll find out all over the world. They're rejecting progressivism. They're rejecting socialism. They want to be like the United States. Trust me when I tell you, they look at the United States and go, I want to be like that. I wish I could get there. Why do you think they want to do it? Because we mimic everybody else. If they wanted that, they go to Europe. You know what people want to do in Europe? They want to visit. That's it. This is the Kevin Jackson Radio Show. Do you owe back taxes to the IRS or state? The secret to avoiding the IRS nightmare is to seek professional representation. My friends at Security Tax Associates provide the most cost-effective and ethical representation in the industry while helping to avoid seizures, levies, and wage garnishments. Security Tax Associates is here to ensure that the appropriate steps are taken to permanently eliminate any possibility of future tax burdens once and for all. For a free, no-obligation consultation, contact Security Tax Associates, 844-779-4177. That's 844-779-4177. 844-779-4177. Or visit them at securitytaxassociates.com. Beth Cook Moranville author of Closer Than Your Breath, A Book of Hope. Hope, that wonderful, wonderful four-letter word that you may feel completely out of. I wrote this book to give you great hope. It's not too late. If fetal position is an all-too-familiar place for you, I understand. If the next 60 seconds are too long, this book is for you. Wherever you are right now, whether you're dealing with divorce or death or sickness, take hope. You are going to make it through this pain. Don't roll your eyes. I've walked this road and I know it. The best is yet to come. Closer Than Your Breath, a book of hope from author and speaker Beth Cook Moranville can be found on Amazon.com or Kindle.com. For more information, visit CloserThanYourBreath.com or on Facebook at Closer Than Your Breath. This is the Kevin Jackson Radio Show. Let kids be kids. Welcome, everybody. Kevin Jackson here to Kevin Jackson Radio Show, KJRadio.com. Let kids be kids. You know, uh, there's a thing. I, when I was growing up, people would say, hey, so-and-so wants to grow up so fast. And we all do, I think, to some degree. You want to grow up quick. You, you know, you, you, you don't get certain things. You can't drive till you're 16. You can't, you know, vote till you're 18. You can't drink till you're 21 or smoke or whatever. So it's, there's always this thing of getting to adulthood and we stretch it out. There are, there are people in the old days, four five, you know, six decades ago that would get married at eight. They'd be married and working on their first kid by the time they're 18 years old. And even going back further than that, when the you know, life expectancy was 31, 32 years old, people got married at 13. I'm not advocating for that. I'm, I personally believe, you know, that if, if you this age of, you know, that you're going to be 
potentially living is 80 years old. Yeah, you can stretch out your youth a little bit. I don't think it's 26 years old. I think what you should do is by the time you're 16 to 18 years old, you should start, you know, getting out of the nest, planning for it, being ready to go. By the time you're 22, you're in a you're a full fledged adult. I mean, unless you got a mental impairment or something like that, you're a full fledged adult. You should be completely out of the house, not wanting to go back, not willing to go back. Parents don't want you back and so on and so forth. Let kids be kids, though. Let them get through that time frame where they learn about life the right way. See, leftists don't want that. The question you should be asking yourself is why won't the left allow that? Why are they trying to indoctrinate kids younger and younger to a leftist ideology, which leaves them in a childlike mentality until they're 30, 35? You ever met these people? I've seen them. I've seen them in video and sometimes I've seen them in real life. And you know what's funny about the millennial generation? They admit I was with one the other day. He's 24 years old. He uh, plays minor league baseball. And he said to me the other day, it's, it's clear, clear as day. He goes, yeah. He goes, I'll be honest with you, man. He goes, my generation, they're lazy. I see them. He goes, because uh, he played baseball. He goes, you know, he goes, they're Dominicans and, and uh, Puerto Rican kids. Man, they work their butts off. They are so, you know, they don't understand us at all. They look at this is a white kid. He goes, they look at us. We've got pitching coaches, batting coaches, fielding coaches, all his parents spending thousands of dollars over a career, hundreds of thousands of dollars on a, on a long shot. And he goes, I don't get it. He, he goes, uh, he goes, I'll be honest. I'm not, I'm not gifted as an athlete, but he goes, I work my butt off. He goes, because I look at people who are in my, you know, work, working in, in my uh, baseball. And he goes, there are people out there. I'm like, look at the physique on this guy. This guy's an athlete. He goes, and they, they don't want to go to practice. They don't want to do, and he goes, they just have natural gifts. But he goes, I know if I keep working hard, I'll get past them. He goes, but that mentality is Kevin. He goes, it's so rare. It's so rare. And he wasn't trying to pat himself on the back. He really wasn't. He was just saying, that's just the way it is. And he goes, and be honest with you, I may not make it. No matter how hard I try, he goes, I don't have any, he's right. He's not, he's not gifted with speed to look at him. You wouldn't even think he's that good of a baseball player, but he is, but he goes, I'm not gifted with speed. I'm not overly strong. I'm not, you know, he goes, I just hustle. I, I do all the things good that I'm supposed to do, but I do nothing great. He sees it. Anyway, what we've got is people being indoctrinated to be lazy, to be kids as long as they can see a kid doesn't want to do chores. A kid is like, oh, oh, it's when you grow up to understand why your parents go clean your room and then you've got chores to help the family. It's because they can't do it all. It used to be that way when back in the old early days, farmers had eight kids. Why? They needed eight hands. <laughs> now I'm not talking about people, you know, that's 16 hands physically. I'm saying they needed eight helpers around the farm. They needed somebody to tend to the chickens, somebody that would tend to the goats, somebody that would tend to the, the sheep and the, you know, maybe they put the goats and sheep together, but, but, but tend to the cows, milk the cows, get the hay, keep the horses going, blah, blah, blah. They needed all those little cherins running around. That's why they did it. So kids grew up quick. By the time you could walk, you had chores. But think about the work ethic that was instilled in you by the time, by the time you were 10 years old, man, you had out a 10 year old back in those decades has would have outworked the average 30 year old in today's time before, before noon, they would have been up at four worked an eight hour day and still weren't over. You know, have time for breakfast and a little bit of prayer and then go back out and go do it again. Sun up to sundown. That's how it was done. Not anymore. If the actions, folks, of Nicholas Cruz and others like him teach us anything, it's that education is a ticking time bomb. And it's that way because of exactly what I just described earlier. Kids have no value for anything, no value of work ethic, no value of self. They don't understand what they're supposed to do in life. They haven't been put through anything. They've been 
few trials and tribulations. And it's mostly because of leftism. Somebody teasing them because they got big feet or they're redheaded or got freckles or buck teeth or whatever else. Each school shooting, each school showcases the world built by leftists, folks, and the time bombs that tick within them. Democrats, progressives, whatever you want to call them, they claim to have created this utopian society where kids don't see color. They don't see religion and so on. It's a big lie. It's a lie. It's something they want you to believe because they need you to believe it. They need you to believe that Democrat progressive ideas work. They work so well. Look at what we're doing, folks. One study says we have the least um, you know, prejudiced generation, the least racist generation in the history of man in America. And in the very next sentence, they tell you just how bad it is. Well, which is it? Are they the least racist? Are, are they the most tolerant? Tolerant of everything. There, there's hardly even a mention of interracial marriage. I'm serious. When I was growing up, interracial marriage was like, oh, you know, he, you know you'd see him and people would, it was a big deal. Like, well, I don't know. You know, it's, you know they've got to deal with the, the idea of they've got those interracial kids. Yeah, holy Halle Berry, folks. That's what comes out. <laughs> we finally figured out, you know what? Shut up about that. They're going to produce some pretty peoples up in here. <laughs> So people are finally waking up and going, you know what? Maybe this isn't so bad. But let me tell you, leftism is not all it's cracked up to be. It's brewing up these victims and people that are always, they've got angst and they don't even know why. It is a, here's what I think. These people haven't gone through anything, so everything is something. What set this kid, Nicholas Cruz, off? I mean, he could have been just crazy. But trust me, folks, these time bombs are ticking all throughout, all throughout academia at every level. And the only thing that's going to make these schools safe are teachers being armed and them stopping with this progressive agenda that tells everybody that this kids like Nicholas Cruz are the enemy. Guys are not the enemy. White guys are not the enemy. Men are not the enemy. Whites are not the enemy. This is the Kevin Jackson Radio Show. Kevin Jackson Radio Show. Welcome back, everybody. Kevin Jackson here. So Ann Coulter tweeted this, uh, New York Times. Microsoft's co-founder, Paul Allen, to give $125 million to teach machines common sense. And her comment was, he can't afford the technology to teach liberals common sense. Welcome to the Kevin Jackson Show. KJRadio.com. <laughs> Eight four four five five one eighty two fifty five. So, hey, how about this one? This is an interesting uh, co- uh, thing that I saw on Twitter. College kids pledge to remove their testicles if Trump builds a wall. And I thought to myself, wow, what are these college women going to do without those when they decide they want to marry each other? Hmm. Because the boys don't have them. That's for sure. Oh, my goodness. Robert Kiyosaki said of blame. When people are lame, they love to blame. <laughs> kind of out of the, the Jesse Jackson <laughs> school of poetry, but still very true. When people are lame, they love to blame. And that's what we're finding out. Is, and, and, and I know people on the left want to apply this to us. They say, oh, you guys blame you know the Democrats for this. Or you blame Barack Obama for this. We're, we're, there are times when blame is correct. But let me tell you, we live in a time where it's been flipped. They blame us for all the wrong reasons. They blame guns when a kid goes and shoots up a school. They blame, look, uh, I can, do I really need to go item by item? They blame us for an economy that was built on high taxes, tax and spend. And then when Donald Trump comes in and cuts it, They want to blame him, and they say the way that they blame him is by saying, oh, the money you got back is crumbs. They don't look at accountability. They take no blame. It's tough to talk about the left because sometimes, you know, it's so illogical that you can't really put it into words. It's tough to boil it down. But I I, I know we've got a lot of examples, so maybe that helps out. 
What do we want to talk about? I'll give you a good example. I just thought of, of one that works. So Chuck Schumer doesn't want Quattlebaum to be the judge, to be a judge in South Carolina, a federal judge, because he's white. Now the left will tell you that they want to eradicate racism. They want to stop, you know, this, the people should be judged by the content of their character, not the color of their skin. They want to give you the doctrines of Dr. Martin Luther King, Reverend Martin Luther King. But the minute they do it, then they come right out of themselves and go, well, we can't let, you know, Quattlebaum be a, a federal judge because he's white. We have a clip, don't we? The nomination of Marvin Quattlebaum speaks to the overall lack of diversity in President Trump's selections for the federal judiciary. Mr. Quattlebaum replaces not one, but two scuttled Obama nominees who were African American. As of February 14th, 83 percent of the President Trump's confirmed nominees were male, 92 percent were white. That represents the lowest share of non-white candidates in three decades. It's long past time that the judiciary starts looking a lot more like the America it represents. Having a diversity of views and experience on the federal bench is necessary for the equal administration of justice. After years of improvement, the Trump administration, like in so many other areas, is taking a giant step backward, this time when it comes to diversity of their nominations. I'll be voting no on the Quattlebaum nomination. That's right, Quattlebaum. Look, I don't know what his background is. He sounds Jewish. It's Quattlebaum, Baum. So you got a Jew saying, I don't want another Jew. And I, I, again, is that a battle that we need to look at? All I care about from Quattlebaum is, is he qualified? Now, don't misunderstand me. You do need to understand the, the, what, the plight of other people. But can you not get that from just looking at, you know, understanding human nature and being a, among the public? How do, what do we know? Did, has this guy walked in the shoes of, of whom? Or, you know, young black men? And, and you get what I'm saying? I mean, I'm not saying he's got to be grow up in the hood, but he can certainly understand things. Ch- here's Chuck Schumer. He apparently understands the situation. He's fighting for the rights of all these other people. Uh, th- so I'll, I'll put it to you another way. Does it, in order for you to understand the plight of a woman, maybe she's been beaten by her husband. Maybe she killed her husband because he was beating her. Do you have to be a woman in order to understand that? Or can you have understood it through your wealth of experiences? The left, man, they pretend the only way you can legislate people and understand them is you got to be black. You got to be black in a black neighborhood, grown up black, 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 or brown, 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 brown. That's the only way you can understand. You have to have been a woman in order to understand women's issues. You don't have to have had a mother or raised daughters or been married to a woman or have sisters. No, you can't understand unless you've been a woman. I mean, what's this thing they get every month? I, what's, what's, they call it like a cycle. Can somebody explain that to me? Yeah, because I, how would I know? I'm not a woman. Yeah, there's no possibility of me knowing anything about that. Or you, if you're a guy who's suffering from toxic masculinity. What a racist thing to say. That because you're a woman, you can't, I mean, a man, you can't, a white guy, you can't be a judge here. A woman, you can't understand men's things. A man, you can understand women's things. Uh, a legal citizen, you can't understand the plight of immigrants, legal or otherwise. It's a, what, what a dangerous precedent. And it's a precedent we've lived by in America for a long time. People have guilted us into believe that diversity and multiculturalism is a good, multiculturalism is the scourge of society. Because it makes people believe that it's based on race or, you know, some sort of ethnicity or it's based on religion and all these different things. No, there's one culture in America. There's one culture that should be pervasive of Germany or France or whatever. And everybody who comes over there embraces that culture. And that could be a mosaic of different people. We've gone so far in the other direction. And part of it is because we don't ever look at the root causes of things. I talked about, you know, gun control earlier and how people, you know, won't even look at the problem of gun control. They they look at, 
uh, you know, I'm talking about the, the actual problem. They look at the gun and they act like that's the deal. That's not the case. Here's a clip from a guy talking about this. Sean Duffy talked about the culture is what we should be looking at. OK, you, a lot of people want to want to take away gun rights or they want to diminish. Gun. I get that. That's that's, that's, that's an old debate. But we had the FBI and local authorities and the school itself Mm -hmm. refusing to act on the obvious for a lot of different reasons. And maybe it was malfeasance and something. Maybe it was a mistake. Maybe it was an oversight. But those three factors alone combined together to allow this kid to go out and get these weapons. It wasn't the NRA who missed the red flags. And the right. and the FBI were told the kid's going to shoot up nobody, a school and he Laura, they don't stop him and then said, suddenly suddenly it's the R- was, NRA's problem? You got to be kidding me. That's a lame well, argument. Congressman Duffy. Well, let's we, we, we John, we've had guns in our society uh, since our founding. And and kids weren't picking up guns and shooting other kids in school. What's happened in the last 20, 30, 40 years that's caused this phenomenon to take place? If you want to address this problem, you have to look at what's happening in culture. Fatherless homes, violence that comes from, from Hollywood in regard to movies and video games. Um, we have a slew of issues that have taken place that have undermined our families and our values. There's no faith and morality in our, in our community, in our schools, in our families any longer. You could look at a whole subset of issues that are addressing the anger that kids have right now that cause them to pick up guns. I talked last night on yes, talking about cell phones Sean? and the detachment that we have from, Sean, uh, you're from quite culture correct. and society. Yeah, there, there are, uh, Sean, if I and might. So if you want to talk about those issues, out. and if you just Congressman go right Garamonde, 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 this is a political issue Garamonde. that, that, that you've been driven for for 20 years that um, that'll that'll come up with each new shooting the bottom line is we have a crisis in america and it's not guns it's our culture and the way we're raising our kids here here welcome back everybody kevin jackson here 844-551-8255 if you want to call the show so sean duffy's telling you exactly what the problem is it's a cultural issue nothing to do with guns guns been around forever uh but I go back to what are the the what does Chuck Schumer want to blame the problems of America on when he when we were playing the, the quarter bomb uh, clip that he earlier lack of diversity of Trump's administration eighty three percent male ninety two percent white yeah the very same makeup from decades ago that had the safest country in the world and people who wanted to come to the country now look I'm not advocating for whiteness and advocating for maleness I don't really care. I tell people all the time. Uh, I told you guys I was at an event in uh, Oregon and people are asking me, Kevin, you know, this, we need more black people. And I'm like, what for? What for? It is. Look, I love black folks. If they're here, great. If they're not, believe me, I said, I go places where there are no white people. Well, I just, you know, we need diversity. Really? Well, let me ask you this. Do you think they're fighting for more white people in Zambia? Do you think anybody's advocating for more white people in Somalia, in Ghana, or anywhere else around the globe? No. The only place we talk about issues and look at how many people of whatever nationality or gender or whatever is in countries like this. We don't talk about that. Nobody's talking about this in the Middle East. Kevin Jackson on the Black Sphere Radio Network. Do you owe back taxes to the IRS or state? The secret to avoiding the IRS nightmare is to seek professional representation. My friends at Security Tax Associates provide the most cost-effective and ethical representation in the industry while helping to avoid seizures, levies, and wage garnishments. Security Tax Associates is here to ensure that the appropriate steps are taken to permanently eliminate any possibility of future tax burdens once and for all. For a free, no-obligation consultation, contact Security Tax Associates, 844-779-4177. That's 844-779-4177. 844-779-4177 or visit them at securitytaxassociates.com end to identity politics this is the kevin jackson radio show welcome everybody kevin jackson here today i'm covering blame uh mozart amadeus who's he said this i pay no attention whatever to anybody's praise or blame i simply follow my own feelings 
Wolfgang Amadeus Mozart. And it is so true. You know, it pray, and, and uh, this isn't even probably a better way to think about uh, blame versus praise. But uh, Pearl Buck said this praise out of season or tactlessly bestowed can freeze the heart as much as blame. And what Pearl was saying is that if you make people feel good about praise for no reason, which is what Obama did, it'll freeze the heart as much as blame will. It'll give you a sense of, I don't know, of superiority when you, what people shouldn't be. T- I was like, I, I tell all people all the time when my kids were young and dad, 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 what, look, 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 look. And you look in a seven year old's tying his shoe and you're like, shut up, kid, get out of here. That, that isn't going to impress me anymore. If you were two years old tying your shoe. I would have been impressed. I'm not going to be impressed. Dad, look, 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 look. I'm putting my pants on. Well, good for you. You're freaking 14. What do you want me looking at you for? That's crazy. Well, we've, we've, we've gone away from this idea of what to praise, and we praise idiots like Barack Obama. Then we say, well, blame. You know, you can't. You, you, when Donald Trump blames somebody because they don't do that, oh, look at him. He doesn't want to take the blame. Let me tell you who didn't take the blame was Barack Obama. Let me tell you who doesn't have any blame to take, at least at this point, is Trump. But yet again, it's all twisted. Now, the good news is there are signs, folks. I've been telling you guys about the signs. I I talked earlier about Jennifer Lawrence saying Hillary Clinton made a huge mistake talking smack about Trump supporters, calling them the wrong thing. Hollywood's making a huge mistake denigrating conservatives all the time. She said that. But what do we have? We have uh, somebody, they, they said it's a stop blaming white people month in March. Somebody put a sign up in New Jersey that says they stop blaming white people. They called it racist. Chuck Schumer doesn't want to appoint a federal judge to uh, Quattlebaum. Why? Excuse me. He doesn't want to appoint him because he says he's white. And Donald Trump appoints too many white people. Well, maybe if more black people signed up and said, hey, Donald, here I am. Or they, he got recommendations, or maybe Donald Trump's just picking the best person for the job. But Chuck Schumer won't appoint a white guy because he's white. Won't vote for him because he's white. But he says that's not racist. Nope, not racist. Signs, folks. Signs. I talked earlier. 11 people have left Donald Trump's administration. It would be 30 if he didn't have to deal with government bureaucracy. It could be as many as 300. I don't know how many people have resigned from the government, but I bet it's hundreds. How many of them have been let go by members of Donald Trump's staff? Hundreds, maybe thousands. And you know what? It's all good news. It's good news because we finally have somebody who says, I'm going to hold you accountable. The blame is going to be on you bureaucrats who have let down the American tax paying citizens for decades. Enough is enough. What do we talk about? Signs from the Oscars? Jimmy Kimmel being told, don't you talk about a bunch of political stuff, man. You're killing us. You're killing our industry. How many signs do you need that when you talk about conservatives and we finally get so pissed, we can't stand you anymore. Then you know what happens? We start voting with our pocketbooks. So Hollywood's feeling it. You don't think Jennifer Lawrence made her declaration because she suddenly saw the light. She saw the financial light. You know what Jennifer Lawrence's accountants and people who what they call handlers said to her? You need to keep your mouth shut, young lady. You were making millions of dollars of film and now you can't. You're not a box office draw anymore. You better mind your business. So she goes on to say, well, you know, I think entertainers and people in Hollywood need to stop alienating the audience because, you know, 25 percent of my audience is liberal and blah, blah, blah. But that's a big part of my audience. It isn't, you know, for me, blah, blah, blah. Well, OK. Yeah, I get it. Blah, blah, blah. <laughs> yada, yada, yada. Yogi Bear said this. He says, I never blame myself when I'm not hitting. I just blame the bat. And if it keeps up, I change bats. After all, it's not my fault I'm not hitting. How can I get mad at myself? <laughs> That's kind of my rule. You know, look, people say, Kevin, you know, you, you were wrong about so-and-so. The, the, some article or whatever. I go, no, the article could have been fake. <laughs> That's my bat. 
I don't care about that. What I said was right. If I give you an opinion on any subject, it's my opinion and it's right. <laughs> now, the subject could have been wrong. And people are asking me now, Kevin, what do you think about Trump You know, saying that Xi should be the ruler for life in China? I don't care what China does. I don't care what Trump says about China. Donald Trump knows, he, and by the way, I think he would be joking if he said it, but because I don't know the context. But Donald Trump knows there is no leader for life in America. But what you can be is you can become iconic. That's what Reagan was. He was a, he's, he's an icon. I've said to many people that remember what I talk about when I talk about Reagan changing, you know, not changing my life, but making me understand what I represented when he lost and Jimmy Carter went on to win the presidency. Carter, uh, Reagan lost the primary and he conceded. And then Jimmy Carter went on to win. And I heard, will never forget that loss because I remember saying that guy, it's not the uh, concession speech of a loser. It's a concession speech of a guy who says I haven't won yet. And he went on to win and he went on to become an icon. And Donald Trump is saying, I don't have to be president forever. I'll become an icon. Maybe that's what he was saying. I don't know. I didn't see it, but here's what I can tell you. My opinion about it is 100% correct. 100%. <laughs> signs, man. That's what we've got. Signs. We get signs from the blame game. Let me tell you who to blame. California has the worst quality of life. That's not Kevin Jackson saying it. That was what was reported. Award season is in full swing in California, and the Golden State just took home a booby prize of its own, writes Fox News. California ranks dead last among U.S. states in quality of life, according to a study by the U.S. News, ranking behind New Jersey and Indiana. California, worst quality of life. What has Governor Moonbeam Brown done? He has said California is a utopia. Come here where you can give people AIDS and we won't prosecute you. Come here to our sanctuary state and we will shoot you. If you're a citizen, we will allow illegals to shoot you and get out of jail, even if they've been deported. Come to our state. We will tax you into oblivion. No worries. Come on. Bring it on. Come to our state. We will let dope, you know, dope flows freely. In fact, you, heroin has now become a misdemeanor. I heard this. Somebody told me this the other day. Heroin, paraphernalia, etc. is a misdemeanor. So what you're doing heroin? No harm, no foul. I don't even need to know your pusher or whatever. Just do your thing. And a host of other crazy things. While I was in Oregon, they talked about the, the huge, they had a huge fire up there, if you guys recall. And it's because of all the leftism that won't let them scale back the trees, cut the trees, do control burns, things like this. And it's now become a huge issue. For Oregon. And not only that, it impacts their Oregon, their Oregon, their lumber uh, uh, industry, their Oregon industry. <laughs> Quality of life in California, lowest of all, after everything they've done, the multiculturalism they've allowed to come in, all the beautiful things of California, the utopian society that Governor Brown has built, and they say it's the lowest quality of life. People who make $135,000 a year living below the poverty line. Did you guys see this? In Sunnyvale, California, a house that was like 1,200 square feet, not even that much, 800 square feet. It was very small. Sold for $2.4 million. You got to see this house. Go look it up. Most expensive piece of property, I think they said in America, 2300 bucks a square foot. Higher than in New York. Manhattan in the best buildings, 2,300 something bucks a square foot. You see this house, it'll blow your mind. It is, let me put it to you this way. In Texas, that house is 60 to $70,000. Practically anywhere. It would be a, it would be a, uh, what you call a teardown. That's certainly what it is in California, but the, the land value has become so precious in Silicon Valley that that house is worth that much money. Do you really believe that's the case? Do you really believe a thousand square foot house should sell for $2.4 million? And I mean, it, it isn't even a tract home. It's a cookie cutter little boop, boop. I mean, there's nothing to it. You go look at the picture. You see what I'm talking about. They said California scored poorly in part because they simply 
They're simply insufferable. In addition to a healthy environment, a person's quality of life is largely a result of their interactions with those around them. One way to measure the quality of life is whether residents can afford to have a roof over their heads, and by that standard, California is failing. He won't stop until he's the top-rated radio talk show host in America. What kind of weird competitive freak are you? This is the Kevin Jackson Radio Show.